I think it's important to tell the Trayvon Martin story because it really is sort of the patient zero story of the Black Lives Matter movement. You know, we talk about cases like Emmett Till and Emmett Till's parents came and marched for Trayvon Martin. That case really galvanized America and forced America to confront what we're doing to black children. You're talking about that in the 1950s. You, tra you know, fast forward to 2012, 2013, we're still killing black children. We're still allowing black children to die for nothing. And if your child isn't safe going to the 7-Eleven to buy his little brother some candy and soda, well then your child isn't safe. And I think for black parents, this realization that our children may not be safe was always about police. It was always about if you lived in a violent area, perhaps a criminal gang. Never did we think about the neighborhood watchmen as the person we have to fear. Now you have to worry that any civilian with a gun can act in the guise of a police officer and achieve the same result that the police achieve when they kill your kid. So I think it was important to tell this story because we need to understand what kind of laws the NRA is pushing onto the books that make us more unsafe. What kind of transfer of authority are we giving from police to civilians and allowing them to kill? Um, the idea of people having lots of guns is one thing, but the idea of people feeling more comfortable using them on a child and knowing, thanks to this case, that they can get away with it thanks to Stand Your Ground, which while it wasn't used in the case, is the reason George Zimmerman wasn't arrested. So these parents, um, Trayvon Martin's parents, have really been heroic in not only putting forward the issue of simple violence, violence against children, but also these laws. I think partly because Trayvon Martin's parents were really grounded and really smart and really well advised, they were able to take this boy and really make him, in a sense, I would say a martyr in a lot of ways, an icon, because his, his face is so familiar to all of us, but I don't think people necessarily remember the details of his story. And I think we have to take these children, the Tamir Rices, the Michael Browns, and take them beyond just a name and a hashtag and fill them out, give them a story. And I think it was important for his parents to have his full story be known, to remind the country we're not beyond this. There was no resolution here, there was no closure, and I think the country needs to rehear this story to remind ourselves of what's wrong. It's important. I mean, I covered this story when I was um, working for thegrio.com. I went down to Sanford. I spent a lot of time in that community. And there are so many layers to it, the sort of layers of racial animus that exist in that society that sort of on the surface, everyone seems to get along. Just below the surface are issues of police um, mistreating members of the community, feeling members of the community feeling neglected and abused by the police. The idea that there was this real stark divide between black and white, um, the question of whether these prosecutors did their all to try to achieve achieve justice for this family. These are issues that go beyond Sanford. And I think, unfortunately, the Trayvon Martin case is not unique or isolated in the sense that it can happen again. It can happen all over the country, not just in the South, not just in Florida, but we need to be on guard for this kind of violence, unmitigated violence everywhere. And if you are a parent of a child of color, it's personal to you. And so I think as journalists, we owe it to those parents to tell that story because we have to be frank about whether or not our children are really safe in this society. And to be honest, in a lot of ways, they're not.